I decided today to start something new. I'm going to start a lecture series, and today's lecture is lecture number one. As the, the, uh, my, my good friend Jeff Mincy gave me this idea. He's one of our subscribers, and Jeff is always coming up with some great ideas about things to talk about. Some things I agree and think that they're something that you, the audience, would be interested in. And there's some things I don't always agree with him on, and and he knows that, and and we understand each other. But this is a good one. I'm going to start with this one right here. It's going to be short. I'm going to read this paragraph to you, okay? He said, Don, I've been thinking this morning of all the cautionary videos you and others rightly produce in regard to the needs of prospective expats to leave their expectations behind and to accept the Ecuadorian culture with an open mind and to meet it on its own time, or I mean, on terms, okay? But I wonder if perhaps in the minds of some people, the pendulum might swing too far. So, as a case in point, I offer two examples of possible pitfalls people might trip over if consciously or not, they come to Ecuador with expectations that it will be much like their home country. And I follow these with a pendulum offset or a correction. Okay, so I'm going to explain these two. I'm, I'm going to call them pitfalls, and I'll start on it right after this. Hey! Oh, rocket cheek. Hello there. So, here we go. This is the start of my lecture series, lecture number one. Expectation pendulum, that's what this is about. Two pitfalls. Pitfall number one, Ecuadorians have their own sense of time. Okay? They have their own unique sense of time. Okay? In both business and in social situations, you'll find that Ecuadorians have a different relationship with their clock. An Ecuadorian serviceman wanting to, you know, that you've hired to come work on your air conditioner. You may have an appointment with him to come at one o'clock. Breaking news, folks, he may not show up until five o'clock, okay? This is something that will require an adjustment on the part of those who are accustomed to promptness. Ecuador has a slower pace of life, all right? And especially for retirees, this is in part, this is due in part to its charm and appeal, but it can be inconvenient times and expats will just have to learn to roll with it. So here's the pendulum correction. The cultural attitude about time does not mean that if you schedule a doctor's appointment for 10.30 in the morning, that you can arrive at the clinic at 3.15 in the afternoon, all right? Likewise, if you need to call a taxi to take you to your doctor's appointment, you don't have to give them an arrival time of one or two hours earlier than you actually need for them to arrive. Also, while the hours of mom and pop business may be somewhat fluid, or variable, it's not the case everywhere. If stores in the Ecuadorian shopping mall say they open for business at 9 a.m., they don't really mean to say their doors will not open until 11.30 a.m. Or if you buy tickets to see a movie which is scheduled to start at 1, it doesn't mean you can show up at 2.30 and expect to see the show, okay? Likewise, if you book a flight which is scheduled to depart at 8.30 a.m., it doesn't mean it won't start boarding until noon. The cultural attitude toward time in Ecuador is very different from that in our countries, speaking mainly about North America. But that doesn't mean it applies to everything, and it's important for us to know the difference. That's pitfall number one. Pitfall number two, Ecuador is a negotiation culture. Okay? We all hear about this long before we come here. People come here with an expectation that Ecuador is a negotiation culture, and you're mostly right, okay? Merchants don't expect you to pay the initial price they ask for a product. Negotiation is commonplace, and you need not worry that you would be taking advantage of a vendor on this account, okay? That makes sense. Vendors know their own limits and how far they can they are willing to go. Negotiation may be rare in one's home country, but it's expected in Ecuador. The pendulum correction. Negotiation may take place in small shops or with street sellers. 
and in some cases for the sale of cars and real estate. But prices are not up for grabs on chain stores like Mega Maxi, Depriti, Clairol, places like that, or in the department stores and upscale shopping malls. And don't think you can get away with making a counter offer on products like iPhones, computers, and iPads. New electronics are not on the bargaining table, not even in Ecuador. So that's it. That's the end of lecture number one. That's about the expectation pendulum, the two pitfalls that we mentioned about the unique sense of time. You're going to love it when you come here and find out that, well, let me just put it this way. Just don't expect anybody to be on time, but you will find some people that will be. Juan Zambrano, my driver that drives all, me and people around town when I'm not driving my car, but, you know, if he tells you he's going to be here at 8 o'clock, you can bet he's going to be here at 8 o'clock or a few minutes early. But all in all, don't expect it. Okay, don't expect anybody to be on time, okay? Number two, it is a negotiation country here. You can negotiate, but you need to know where you can negotiate, okay? And that's what you will learn when you get here and actually start mixing with the vendors and buying and selling and so forth, okay? That's it for lecture one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.